Hello, everybody. Good day. This is Julio Dal Costa, Director of Technical Accounting at Bramasol. And today we have another accounting advisory tip. Today we're actually going to talk about a very complex subject that everybody seems to have a fascination with. The topic is standalone selling price. The objective today is to simplify what exactly is standalone selling price and then to describe some of the methodologies used to estimate standalone selling price. Again, we're in the five step model of the new ASC 606 IFRS 15 revenue accounting process. We have five steps in the model, and today we are in step four allocate transaction price to the performance obligation. Now, if we take a step back, how do you exactly allocate the transaction price to the performance obligations? Well, if you have two items in selling a vehicle and uh, maintenance for that vehicle, I now have to allocate that car and maintenance contract over the price that I paid. Now, it might not be so direct that the price that I paid is actually the standalone selling price. That's why we want to talk today about what exactly does this mean. So if we take a high level summary, the standalone selling price is very simple. It's the price at which a company would sell a promised good or service separately to a customer. Why did I highlight separately? <clears throat> because we know in bundling, especially in the accounting world, bundling, a customer may buy a number of items for one price. So us as accountants have to figure out if I unbundled those goods or services, what would I pay for that service or good separately? So if I pay $20,000 for a car and it includes maintenance, if I just went in and I asked the salesperson, can I just buy a maintenance contract? That maintenance contract may not be the same price that is allocated had I bought a car and a maintenance contract together. So what is the best evidence of standalone selling price? Well, the best evidence is an observable price in a company's standalone sales of a good or service. Okay. So let's take that back for one second. What does it mean when it says observable price? Well, it's exactly what I just described. When you have an unbundled good or service, what is a customer willing to pay for that? That is the observable price. And I think in today's digital economy, many things are being bundled. And sometimes it's not as intuitive to bifurcate the goods and services and obtain a standalone selling price. So that is a challenge. Sometimes it's just not observable. However, the other challenge is under the new guidelines, companies are required to estimate it. So the guidance is again subjective in this area and it gives some guidelines about how you should estimate it. I like this graphic because it gives you a good guideline when you're reviewing your contracts. So the first one is, if you have an observable price, that's the best evidence. Nobody will challenge if the observable price is in front of you, which is the price at which the entity would sell in an open market, third party arm's length. However, if that's not available, there are three different approaches. The first one is the adjusted market assessment approach. In a nutshell, that means what would companies, what do I think the companies, my competitors would actually pay for this? So if I am, if I, if I am Honda motor car and I know what Nissan or Toyota, I can get a bundle of different prices from other competitors to come up with my estimated standalone selling price. The issue with that approach 
is that most people do not know their competitor's pricing. It's a trade secret in most situations. The second estimation methodology is the easiest because it comes from internal processes. It's the expected cost plus margin. Now, when we say that, a company may say, well, I, can, I, I know my expected cost and I can come up with my margin. But for companies, be wary that you just can't say I'm going to do 100% margin. It has to be a reasonable margin based on historical calculations. This is the approach that we have seen most common because it's easier to estimate and companies can use five-year look back to estimate the estimated cost plus margin. The last approach is very similar to 605. If I have two products or services or goods and service, I can, and I know the price of one as a standalone, and I know the total price of the bundle, I can use logical math to say, okay, total less the price of one is equal to that residual amount, and I can use that as my estimate. When it comes to determining standalone selling price, what I want you to take away from this five minute snippet is you have to use the observable inputs in this estimate. You have to consider all information that is reasonably available and always consider what you believe customers are willing to pay for your good and service. Thank you very much. I know that I was a little in depth, but that was standalone selling price. Again, if you have any questions, you have any questions for me or anyone at Bramsol, feel free to reach out. And this is exactly why we are now performing the Revenue Accounting Health Check, where we look at your revenue accounting process from four different angles to help you with best practices and implementation guidelines about the new 606 standard, IFRS 15. Thank you very much. Have a great day.